going on everyone and welcome to another Battery 101. Today is going to be a bit different as we'll be getting more hands on with a battery. In this video our technician Perry will be breaking open a dead battery that a customer gave us. And as you can see the battery appears to be in great condition. But there is some internal damage that we'll be taking a look at. So we're going to be taking apart this 5000 milliamp 3S LiPo battery and so we can show you how exactly impact damage affects your batteries while also giving you a full tour of what the inside of one of our batteries really looks like. Along the way we'll go over the fundamentals of battery construction and even show you what separated battery cells look like from within the battery. We'll start here in this office and then move outside when it's time to cut into the cell itself. Due to the chemicals and odor, it's always best to be somewhere outside or somewhere with great ventilation when you do this. So think of this as your anatomy class in high school, but for batteries. So no frogs cut open. Without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So it's a good idea to be very careful whenever you have a knife next to a LiPo battery. The outside layer is a heat shrink. You'll notice the yellow capped on tape that holds everything together. Then we have our side plates on that help with abrasion resistance. If you ever do something like this, your cells should be dead. You never want to work on anything that has live cells, especially when it comes to having sharp objects next to the live cells. First, we're going to cut the binding apart on this outer layer. Now underneath this area here are all the battery tabs. Anything metal, especially on a live battery, you need to be extra careful with. We can see here that the reason this battery is no longer any good is because of the impact damage. This may not seem like a big deal, but once you see how well the cell is constructed, you'll understand that this is actually a major problem. This could potentially cause internal shorting, but once we get into the cell, you'll be able to see why a bent or even a puff battery is a problem. So now Perry is carefully removing the tape layers between the actual cell pouch and the aluminum plate. The aluminum plate is what gives it an extra bit of rigidity to the pack but also acts as an extra layer of crash resistance. Now it's not crash proof, but it certainly helps. So here's the first layer. Again, do not take a knife or any sharp object to a live LiPo battery at all. This one is dead. This is very important because once you expose these cells to air, they can be very dangerous. We're starting to see all the metal contacts and things like that in here that I was saying to be aware of earlier. There are also wires that you need to be careful of in here. Now we can take a look at the end where the cells are welded together. This is the positive of one pack and this is the negative of the other packed. And then the balance wires actually go to the outside to the discharge leads, and then to the positive and negative of the middle as well. This gives it the ability to take the voltage of each cell. Now let's take these wires off of the tab so that it's easier to see what's going on here. 
It's also not a good idea to solder on the battery packs directly as the cells are maintaining a vacuum seal and it's very easy to melt the pouch if you're not using the right equipment. So, as you can see, Perry is using a very high powered soldering iron that transfers heat quickly to prevent overheating of the pouch material. You can see this blob of solder here that ran. If there hadn't been a protector, it would have short circuited. We also have one of our tabs come out here from the balance circuit. Again, working on a live battery is a bad idea. Now, oh, see that little spark that jumped out right there? Okay, we're gonna slow it down so you can get a really good look at that spark. If this would've been truly live battery, that would've been much more than just a little spark jump. So now the pack can come apart. All these tabs are actually incredibly fragile, so don't get any ideas about modifying the pack because these tabs are stacks of very thin metal. And flexing them around and soldering them can be very hard on them. You'll see what I mean the further we get into this. see the crumpling here on the cells. All three cases, which is very bad. There's a potential heat spot and fire hazard. Now, to be fast, let's see if we can separate the cell with solder instead of cutting it. And there's one cell. there's the internals of a three cell battery pack that is damaged. So what Perry is about to do now is cut open a foil pouch. This is highly not recommended. It's full of chemicals, hence why we are outside. And definitely do not cut into a fully charged cell. That's a very bad idea. But we are going to start with a little puncture here and then just gonna let the blade run right along the edge of the pack. cut the foil off and get more in depth here in a second. Then you'll see why the bend in the battery is not great. See how this cracked here on the inside? That's a problem there. That should be completely intact. This is also all bent up here on the corner. Now we have the anode and cathode up here and this is the foil pouch. Here we have the battery tabs just sticking out right here. Now this is the polymer part in the lithium polymer battery that we're cutting off here. It wraps up and once you take it off it exposes the first cell plate. Then when you open up one of these, you can see how it is a stack of plates. You can also see that the anode and cathode are ripping as I go because they are so thin. So you have this stack of cell plates inside of a lithium polymer battery, which we put together with a Z stacking method. Anyways, when these get munged up or this plastic barrier is pierced, cracked or broken, and you get bending in the plate, it can be quite dangerous. You can get internal shorting or heat spots. In fact, you can see a tear right here from this impact damage. It was internal and completely hidden, but it is there. That's because this battery was impacted, and a small tear like this could cause many issues, such as internal shorting, puffing, heat spots, plating, sag during use, and more. Would never assemble a cell with any kind of defect in it like that. That was hidden damage, above and beyond what you saw from the outside. Now the other part that is important with a polymer battery is that it is kept tight. 
In order for it to work properly, this tight pack being held together in a vacuum, or basically being pressed together by our atmosphere, keeps the battery functioning properly. If it is puffed or bulged, you get plate separation. And if you get plate separation, you've got either heat spots or reduced capacity due to the lack of contact between the anode and cathode. You have room for shorting and all kinds of things. That's why you don't want to use a puffed lithium polymer battery either. A damaged or puffed cell is actually a bigger deal than you think. You might think, oh, that's just a little bit of puffing. But that means that the internal components are completely compromised. Now, just for fun, we can take a look at how much is inside just one cell of this 5,000 milliamp battery. Perry's gonna roll this out and you can actually tell this is all just inside one cell. This is the other side of the tabs. The tabs are literally really, really thin foil that are stacked together and tapped up. So you get a single tab going through the foil, but it's attached really gently here. So another place that impact damage can have a massive effect is here at the tabs. Now it's unusual, but it is possible. Well, there you go. There we go. So that is the inside of a cell. So now that we've taken apart a battery that came to us after just a few crashes, you can see how much impact those crashes can truly have on a battery. It's very important to take care of your batteries and to look them over after every run to make sure that there is no impact damage to the battery itself. As you saw, even a battery that appears to have slight impact damage could actually be damaged all the way down to the basic core of the battery itself. So we hope you took something away from this Battery 101. As always, I'm Zach, and don't forget to give us a like and a subscribe, it really helps out. Until next time, be safe out there.